Okay, first let's have a little think. What is standard form? What's the point of it? Why do we need something called standard form? Well, standard form is just a way of writing down very large or very small numbers much more easily. So, for example, there are this many stars in the observable universe. Now, that is an extremely large number. It takes up a lot of space to write it down and it would be really hard for me to read that number out. OK, we know we have place values such as thousands and then millions and billions. But after that, it'll get really hard to remember what all the different place values are. So we need a better way, a more efficient way of writing these numbers. So here's how we do it. If we think about really large numbers to start with, something like a million, the thing that makes that difficult to write out is the number of zeros we have to write. And we're just writing a string of zeros. Now that string of zeros just tells us how many times the original number has been multiplied by 10. So we're talking about powers of 10. So for example, 10 squared is 100. So the number 400, I could write as four lots of 10 squared or four multiplied by 10 squared. And that's another way of writing the number 400. Well, 400 isn't that large a number anyway. It doesn't matter. We could write that without using standard form. But that standard form method can be used for any power of 10. So something like 10 to the power of 3 is 1,000. So 4,000 would be 4 times 10 to the power of 3. And you can see how we're going here. Any increase in a power of 10, we just increase the indices, the index, the power by 1. So 40,000 would be 4 times 10 to the power of 4. So even extremely large numbers that might have a string of 20 zeros after them, we can write really quickly using times 10 to the power of and whatever that number may be. Now, this works for really large numbers, but what are we going to do about really small numbers? We want to be consistent and use the same method. Well, these powers of 10, if I actually start decreasing them, you can see that every time they are being divided by 10, they're being decreased by a power of 10. So 10 to the power of 1 is 10. 10 to the power of 0 is 1. And as we go into our negatives, we can see it's dividing by 10 every time. So 10 to the power of minus 1 is 0 0.1. So a small number like 0 0.4 would be written as 4 times 10 to the power of minus 1 because it's 4 times 0 0.1. And I can keep decreasing down my powers here. So I have this. So something like 0 0.0004, I can write that much quicker as 4 times 10 to the power of minus 4. So this is just some key information, how we write our powers of 10 and how that might be helpful in standard form. So, as I said in the last slide, standard form is always written like this. We have a number times by 10 to a given power. So it's always in this form. So the first thing is this number here, which I've just called A. On my last slide, I kept saying the number 4. It can be any number between 1 and 10. It can equal the number 1 but it can't equal 10. So it can be 1, it can be 2, it can be decimals like 2.5, it can be anything all the way up to 10. So it can be 9.999 recurring forever, but it can't equal the number 10. Okay, so that's the rule we have for A. It's always multiplied by 10, so it's always times 10. And then that's called the base. So the base is always 10. We don't use other numbers. We want to be consistent. And then this n here, I've just called it n, is our power. OK, so we can have negatives here um, or we can have positives. So negatives would determine that it's a small number and a positive power would mean that it's a large number. 
Okay, so I'm going to do two examples with you first on how to convert large numbers into standard form. So the first one I have here is 700 million. Okay, you don't need to be able to say it, um, although it's good practice and you should be able to do that, but it's 700 million. Now, writing this in standard form, my first rule was that my first number needs to be a number between 1 and 10. So if you think about this here, what original number has been multiplied by powers of 10? So you can see it's the digits I have here, it's this 7. So 7 is going to be my first number in my standard form. Now how many times has 7 been multiplied by 10? What is my power of 10? Well, if we have a look, and this is where you might have been taught by teachers that we sort of count how many zeros or we count the moving of the decimal place. It's how many times has it been times by 10? What's my power of 10? So I can see here it's been times 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 times in total. So it's 7 times 10, 8 times, which means it's 7 times 10 to the power of 8. And that's my answer. Here's one that's slightly different though, which is why I don't say count the zeros. Um, this number here, 56, would not work as my first number in my standard form because we have that rule that the first number must be between 1 and 10. So the number I'm going to use here is going to have to be 5.6. So 5.6 is my initial number. Now, how many times do I have to multiply 5.6 by 10 until I get this number 56 million? OK, so this is where my decimal point is here in 5.6. We can imagine the decimal point being there. Times it by 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 times I have to multiply it by 10 which means it is 5.6 times 10 to the power of 7. And that's my answer. And just a point here, the reason we have this rule that this first number has to be between 1 and 10, if I'd have chosen 56, I would have got the answer of 56 times 10 to the power of 6, which is true. 56 million is 56 times 10 to the power of 6. But we need to be consistent. We all need to get the same answer of a consistent way of writing these numbers. So that's why we have that rule, so that we don't have 5.6 times 10 to the 7, 56 times 10 to the 6, or even 560 times 10 to the 5. All these would be equivalent. So we just need one answer so that we're consistent. OK. So here's two for you to try. Again, they're both large numbers that need converting to standard form. So pause the video and have a go and then unpause when you're ready to see the answers. OK, here's the solutions then. So the first one here is um, a more simple one. So we should have got nine for our initial number. Um, that's fine, it's number between 1 and 10. And how many times has it been multiplied by 10? We can see it's been multiplied 4 times, so it's 9 times 10 to the power of 4. This one here is a little bit more tricky. I have sort of 124 as my significant figures here, um, but I can't use that. I also can't use 12.4 because that's above 10. I'm going to have to use 1.24 and that's absolutely fine it's a number between 1 and 10 so how many times has that been multiplied by 10 well if my decimal points there 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 obviously once you get better at these you don't have to write this step in I'm just showing you uh, where the 10 to the 7 comes from so 1.24 times 10 to the power of 7 now let's do some examples on really small numbers. So just like before, with 0 0.00006, I'm going to identify what number can I use between 1 and 10. On this one, I can see here I've got this 6 that I can use. So 6 is my first number. Now, with the small numbers, I'm not multiplying 6 by powers of 10 in order to get to this number. I'm going to be dividing it by 10, essentially. But standard form always has to be multiplied by 10 to the power of something. So I can't write this, and I'll just count for you now, it's going to be 
one, two, three, four, five. It's five times, but it's being divided by 10. But I cannot write this as six divided by 10 to the power of five. Standard form always needs to be a multiply. Well, dividing by 10 is the same thing as multiplying by 10 to the power of minus one. If you go back to that key information slide we had, I wrote that 10 to the power of minus one is 0 0.1 and times in by 0 0.1 is the same thing as dividing by 10. So what I'm doing here is I am times in six by 10 to the power of minus one five times. OK, so when I simplify this, I have six times 10 to the power of minus five. OK, so just reiterate that again. You cannot write here six divided by 10 to the power of five. That's the same thing as six times 10 to the power of minus five. But you need to write it as a multiply. So this one here, now we know that. Let's have a go at this one here. So my first initial number, I can't use the 24. I'm going to have to use 2.4. So it's a number between 1 and 10. Now, how many times does this 2.4 get divided by 10 or multiplied by 10 to the power of minus 1? Let's count how many times. 1, 2, 3, just three times. So this is 2.4 multiplied by 10 to the power of minus 1 three times. So it's 2.4 times 10 to the power of minus 3. So you can tell when something's written in standard form, if it is a negative power, then it represents a small number like these. If the power is a positive number, so if this was a positive 3 here, it would be representing a large number. OK, so have a go at these two here on the right and um, have a go at writing these in standard form. Use these on the left to guide you. Pause the video and then unpause when you're ready to see the answers. OK, here's the answers then. So this first one here, I'm going to use five as my starting number. And how many times has that been multiplied by 10 to the power of minus one? One, two, three, just three times. So it's five times 10 to the power of minus three. And then this one here, I can't use 72. I'm going to have to use 7.2 as my starting number. And let's count how many times has it been multiplied by 10 to the power of minus one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times. And again, you don't have to write out this step. Once you become more comfortable, you can just go straight to the answer. So 7.2 times 10 to the minus 8. I just have two final examples to go through with you on this presentation. So we can go from ordinary form into standard form, which is what we've just done. But you can also be asked to take some standard form and rewrite it as an ordinary number. So here I have 6.1 times 10 to the power of 4. So let's think about what this means. It means we've started with the number 6.1 and we are multiplying it by 10 four times. So this is what I'm trying to work out. And we can all do this. If I times it by 10 once, I get 61. If I times it by 10 again, I get 610. And then I get 6,100. And then I get 61,000. And that's all we have to work out. And that's the answer. So ordinary form just means writing it back as a, a normal number. This one here is a little bit harder to do. Now, just remember, times in by 10 to the power of minus 7 essentially means divide it by 10 seven times or times it by 0 0.1 seven times. So we're decreasing it by a power of 10 seven times. OK, so you can write this out and sort of count moving that decimal place to see where it ends up, if that's helpful. But uh, when you are finished dividing it by 10 seven times, you should have 0 0.0000000. So that's six zeros after the decimal point and then three, two, eight. OK, that's why standard form is much more preferred for these small numbers, because that is not pleasant to read out. OK, here's two for you to try. So again, pause the video and then unpause when you're ready to see the answers.
Okay, first question then. So this means we are taking 4.92 and multiplying it by 10 five times. So when you've done that, you should have 492,000. And then this one here, we are taking 8.9 and we are timesing it by 0 0.1 or dividing it by 10 three times. So when you've done that, you should get 0 0.0089. If you do want some more practice on these, I've set up some questions here for you to do. Um, so it's a bit of a mixture. So any numbers you see written in ordinary form, I want you to write them in standard form. And any you see in standard form, have a go at writing them back into ordinary form. So I've split them into some standard questions, some slightly more challenging ones, and then a super challenge on the end. So pause the video, have a go at whatever you want to have a go at, and then unpause when you're ready for me to reveal the answers. Okay, here are the answers then. So they're the answers to the standard questions. So they were slightly easier just because they only involve one significant figure. Here's the answer to the challenge ones. So just pushing it a little bit more because they include two significant figures. And then super challenge on the end uh, because I've included some worded numbers like million and billion. So expecting you to know your place values and more significant figures. The very last question is quite an interesting one with the nine there. So how many times do we multiply nine by ten? Um, well, we multiply it by ten no times to get nine. So it's nine times ten to the zero. And of course, ten to the power of zero is just one. So it's nine times one essentially. Thank you for watching my lesson, I'm Mrs Jagger. If you've liked this video, please give it a big thumbs up below and subscribe for more content like this. Thank you for watching.